I love these mid daytime chats and I'm on with acting coach Robert Col Colt, <laughs> who I've known for a very long time. And Robert's a very successful acting coach, but isn't it interesting because acting coaches coaches are only as successful as their as their clients are. So he has very successful clients with his technique, which is the art of non acting. We as casting directors, of course, we are watching performances all the time every day and it can't look like someone is acting, but no one has actually um, said it the way that you say it. So I'd love you to talk about your art of non-acting and how you get such successful performances out of your clients. Sure. Uh, I think that because I keep it so simple, Terry, I keep it very simple. It's for me, it all comes to listening. It's really about, you know, the quality of the listening. Of course, everything's within the given circumstances that has to always be honored. One of my favorite quotes is from Stanislavski, truth in art is truth in circumstances. So there's a few pieces for me, it's very simple, but a few pieces that I always, um, reiterated my classes and I'm always empowering towards listening is the key because if you're really listening you can't be in the past and you can't be in the future you have to be with what's really mm -hmm. happening and when you're really with what's happening and then you have to trust your genuine authentic response in that moment and, when, and I always emphasize genuine and authentic because it can't be conventional you know mm -hmm gifted casting directors like yourself and there's others you have an i know you have this you have an incredible eye for truth you know if something's not honest and when a truth is non-conventional and spontaneous it has a quality of aliveness that we're all looking for that we're all looking to experience for ourselves and when we watch actors and that for me is the most exciting moment when an actor doesn't know what they're going to do next when it's a surprise to them it's a surprise to you and I um, I was actually surprised I was writing someplace yesterday and I had NPR on and Terry Gross is actually um, on for the last couple of days with an interview with Allison Jones who's a casting direct big casting director and just what you're saying like she watches hundreds and hundreds of self tapes and you know finds the one that is truthful and stands out what I want to ask you though what's coming up for me is I would imagine though someone would need to know that character that they're playing very very well right. to come up with with a response so right so first they have to like do you teach them how to go down and understand the tell me about that yeah, yeah. no it's a great question and the answer is i do of course but i do it in a way that you know i was very fortunate I, you know i had a lot of good uh good influences and i got very lucky when i connected to harold guskin mm -hmm. and and uh, Harold since passed and uh, Harold and I had a, a great connection and it actually became the seed of what became what I'm doing. And what I realized is that character, look, there's many techniques to do this. So I want to be clear about this. Whatever really works for you is the right one. So whether it's, you know, method acting, whether it's Meisner acting, whether it's Stella, you know, whether it's other people's approaches. For me, what I've realized and what's the most exciting is that in the most fascinating way, as you're really listening and you're honoring the circumstances, what period is it in? What state is it in? Is it in the United States? If it's in, you know, Alabama, where in Alabama, how do the accents differ? You know, these have things have to be very specific. What's the working class or is it upper class? Those things are very important. 
And yet with all of that, what I found is you don't get to discover, you do, but and if the, the character, it discovers you. And I do it from the marrow of the bones. I'm, I'm working way inside of it, Terry, so that the character starts revealing itself to you in, in, in the way that I work. Even to the point things will happen like, no, put this on, wear that. No, don't wear that. You're like, huh? Okay. It starts speaking to you. It starts doing you. It's like Sandy Meisner has a beautiful quote. Great actors don't do great acting. Great actors allow great acting to do them. It's like Charlie Bird Parker said, don't play the saxophone, let the saxophone play mm -hmm. you. And what I keep seeing over and over in my classes, and I see it every week, I could have five or six scenes, at least two to three of them, this thing happens where it's so unpredictable, it's so spontaneous in the circumstances as the character. So I don't know if that answered your question as fully, you know, and how to go about that, but it comes from honoring all the circumstances and then as in quote, the character, which is still you, it's still you. Mm -hmm. Meryl Streep always says it's her bent. They want mm -hmm. to ask Marlon Brando, how do you become these mm -hmm. characters? How do you, and he said, he said, no, 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 you're misunderstanding. It's still me, but I'm in there. But at the same time, I'm with, you know, I'm, I'm merging with something as me other than me. So I, you still have to, they still have to really make choices about that character. Otherwise, they're just, just picking up a blank piece of paper and, you know. Right. No. Okay. So here, so he, right. So here's where what I do seems to be different from what other people may talk about. The cho choices that you're describing, and I get this, actually, when you really trust what's unfolding and you're really listening, what we call choices happen. And they don't, and they keep, they keep happening as long as you trust. If you don't, tr then you're going to get self-conscious and you're going to panic. I, I say this way you know once you're on the train of truth if you get off it's not, not so easy to get back on again because it's, it's like this when Stanislavski came up with his technique he was studying the great actors of his mm -hmm. time he did not have a technique per se he was studying them and he would go like this oh they made a choice there oh they have an intention that's an objective the irony is they didn't have that they happened to be very naturally spontaneous naturally gifted talents you know they put you on stage with a spear you hang out with these great actors and you know you pick it up maybe maybe but it seems like there's no technique in what i'm saying but there's a very beautiful technique and a great discipline and it all comes back to if i'm really listening the choices you just mentioned will start happening and as you do another they're taking another take they're very similar to the choice they're there again but it may have a different color here's why if i'm looking at you if i'm looking at you sorry for the noise if i'm looking at you and i look away for a moment and i come back to you you're not the same there's subtle differences in your expression there's subtle differences in your eyes how you're listening so for me there's a heightened listening that's going on so therefore, if I do another take, it's not going to be identical. Mm. I love that. Um, I love that because even, of course, I'm mainly a commercial casting director and coach. And I do say that too, never try to be identical. Then you're just a machine trying to redo what you did. Um, so if when someone is in your a session of your class and they're doing a scene and it's not authentic like what would be how would you get them back on track i, I do it all the time <laughs> i'm sure you do I, but i how yeah. no, but i mean no, i'm laughing because you know um actors that work with me They'll know they could be doing something and I'll go, wait, wait a second, wait a second. You're in your head. The head is dead. What I mean by the head is dead. It, it's not alive to what's happening. So you're getting in your head, you're, you're trying to make something happen. You think, so I'll stop it. And I'll say, listen, listen, take a moment here. Listen 
Again, just listen, just listen and see what happens. I keep it very simple. Just listen and see what happens. And when I say listen, Terry, we listen with our eyes. We listen with our ears. We listen with our feelings. You know, it, this, this organism is very receptive. You know, if I said it this way, I had my epiphany when, when I was doing privates with Harold Guskin for myself. Mm -hmm. He had given me this piece I'd never done, and Harold would do a very cool thing. He'd give it to you, and you would do both parts. And that's what I teach people, how to do both parts, mm -hmm. meaning it really gets you to listen. So you know how ballet dancers have the balance beam, singers have the scales? This, for me, is an actor's scale to do this. And I did something for him, and I'll never forget it. He went, that's it. That's the scene. You should be on Broadway doing it. And I went, wait a second, Harold, wait a second. <laughs> It can't be this uh -oh. easy. On that at this moment, he looked at me and he said, it is this easy and nobody wants to believe it. This was my epiphany. Now, when I say this, I want to just say, when I would go in, Kevin Klein was coming out of a, a session with him or Glenn Close. I was then going in. And I remember I said, well, if it's this easy, why does Kevin still come to you for after 30 yeah. years? And he said, he said, he said because he forgets. <laughs> You know, so he hones, you know, so it's, it was really a beautiful epiphany for me. So the whole thing is, for me, is to bring actors back to the simplicity of listening, trusting what's happening without making it happen and going with your genuine, I'm going to emphasize genuine response. It can't be conventional. You know, this is an emotional art form. Acting is an emotional art form. You know, I was just watching it. Again, I don't know if you've seen The Last of Us, but that episode three. Is it's on my list. I have not yet. It's some of the most beautiful acting I've ever seen in my life. I'm definitely it's now. It's going to go to the top oh. of my list now. Yeah, the first time I saw it, I was blown. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of my eyes keep going down yeah. looking at the um, comments. I see a lot of people ex sharing their experiences of not being in their, learning how to not be in their head, be in their heart. As, um, so I just want to tell everyone who's watching, I, I am looking at your comments. Uh, someone said episode three of what, please? Can you repeat? The, the Last of Us with Nick Opperman and oh the beautiful actor from the first season of White Lotus um, he won a he won an Emmy for it I can't his name's uh, passing me at the moment they are so beautiful in it oh, that brings me up to something else Terry for me a actor's greatest strength is their vulnerability vulnerability mm -hmm. is is so huge and that openness that beauty and when i say vulnerable i mean being vulnerable to whatever's happening being vulnerable to whatever feelings are being you know generated what you're receiving from the other actor it's it's the most beautiful thing when you see that in actors you know as you're telling me this i'm thinking someone actors to be in your class or to be successful in any class to get where you're asking them to get to have to be very emotionally evolved. You know, what if they're not yet? Like, does that peel off like an onion too? You know, maybe someone comes to you and they're, they, their guard is up. Maybe they have a lot of shields up. Like, yeah. Yeah, but you know, and, 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 and that happens and uh, everybody's different. I get it. I come from the heart. My approach is totally from the heart. I, so, and I have another advantage because you know this, uh, Michelle, my wife and I taught workshops for 18 Which years. Which I've taken you know? everybody, by the way. <laughs> yeah. At first it was called Acting Success Now and it switched to the name Inside Game. And in that it was all about techniques and processes that could let down the defenses, that could open one one up, you know, to greater success and greater availability. So if an actor is stuck in my class, I use those techniques. I mean, this is what I do. I'm able to use those techniques in the moment to help them get through any block or barrier. And then they know how to do it on their own as well. So if someone 
everyone is studying with you. Everyone's thanking you, by the way. Um, oh, <laughs> um, and my assistant, Jamie, is on, and she's going to be texting me. Oh, I didn't bring my computer. I don't have my computer on my lap. Anyway, um, so I'm saying it's off the hook, amazing tools, your workshop. Um, so I also go think, ahead. Also think, yeah. See, I, I love actors. I love acting. I'm an actor. You yes, know, you I are. just you know, just had a really cool, you know, part in a movie uh, not too long ago, and uh, that director wants me in another film. He's doing two other films, and so I love actors. And I think I don't know how you could work with anybody you really don't love or have a have a good feeling towards. I don't know how you could really, you know, champion them, empower them, be an advocate for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I give everything I have. And if, if I could give more, I give more, you know, I just love doing it so much, you know, and, and I happen to be very lucky, Terry, because the actors that are in my classes are, have all, they're, they're all these big hearted, you know, they're emotional, they're honest, and they support each other. There's no sense of competition mm -hmm. in my classes. And actors say this all to me all the time. I, there's, I, there's no sense of competition. Everybody seems to really pull for each I other here. I hope so. Yeah. Are you doing in-person classes yet? Most people are not. In LA, yeah. In LA, I do in-person in on Thursday and Friday. And for those that can't do in-person, I have a Zoom on Saturdays. Yeah. I mean, really actors in, these, in the Zoom class too. It's very effective, even though you're not in the same room, I find. No, it, it is. I, I, I like that I have both because I'm such a people guy. I love to see the people be there. And at the same time, what I love about Zoom is it's like a camera yes. for the actors. So I like that aspect. In the classroom, what, what works for me is my eye, Terry, the best way I could say it, my eye functions like a camera. Mm. Like I see things and, and then like, you know, the, the actors will say to me, how did you see mm. that? How did you in that moment. I mean, it was the moment I wasn't honest. And I said, because I could feel it and I can see it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it, I think that's, I think that's so important because what starts happening, the actors, they start catching on to it. Like they'll say to me when they're watching other movies now, they could see when an actor is there right. and when they're not there. Right. And self-taping is still the number one, especially for your first, for the actors, all you actors who are with us, your first auditions are self tapes. So working online, I think is a very good preparation for all of that. Yeah, what I would say to the actors too is, this is for how I work. If you're not having fun, that's feedback. The key to me is are you having fun meaning when i mean fun are you loose are you having a good time with it are you exploring or are you tightening up mm -hmm. if you're tightening up you can't be available to what's happening right it's just not possible you know what it's like because sarah you've seen so, so over these years so many actors don't some come in they're just so loose so relaxed they're fun to be around those are the ones that book or audition well you know, the yeah. the actor's job is to audition and audition well. And then so many other variables happen after the audition. So, oh, yes, the act actors, you should love auditioning. You should love doing scenes in classes. I, You know, as a casting director, I always look to see see um, if the actor is studying and who they're studying with. I just, I can't see someone who's serious about acting, you know, who their aim is to do film and television, that they're not in a class. It, I don't even respect them as an actor. It just doesn't make sense to me, really. I, I, I think that's great. I think that personally, that's great. Like I look at acting very, very similar. And you love pickleball, but I look, I look at it as sports in many ways. I happen to be a big basketball fan. In the off season, basketball players don't stop playing basketball. They work on their craft. They work, they're, they're working in the gym, working on their weights. They're staying in shape. They really don't have many breaks from it, you know? And, and 
they're just the best ones in the summertime work on new moves. They want to improve their game. So I don't think it ever ends. I, I can't even imagine an actor wanting it to end. In other words, I compare it to a vampire, like you need to suck that blood. <laughs> and by being in an acting class, you know, that's, that's feeding you, like that's, that's it. Yeah, no, I, I agree, you know. Uh, it's, and the other thing I tell actors, like actors will say, well, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting auditions, I'm a hard time doing this, you know. You gotta be watchful for the way the mind will ex make excuses. Mm -hmm. Two reasons. I told that several actors a few years ago, make your own projects, make your own projects. And two in particular that come to mind is a Michaela Whit Whitman and Arthur uh, De La Roche. And they made two movies. One went to Cannes. Oh, wow. And then another actor made a couple of films. I, you know, this might sound paradoxical, but I think it takes courage to have a great life. I think it takes courage to really go for it fully, regardless of what you consider to be challenges or odds, because people are not um, energized around people that are victims or making excuses. People are energized around people that literally are vital, that have an aliveness to them, you know, that are excited about what they're doing, that have a confidence about it. I totally agree. And you have to keep in motion. You can't sit yes. at home and say, oh, nothing's ha happening, but you do, even taking an acting class, which is not incidental, it's not a but, it's not a little side and, I think it's prominent for an actor to keep things yes. moving and, and their energies are positive and unexpected things will come to them will open up even the people that you meet yes who are doing a project the, or well the first movie that arthur and michaela made 13 of the actors out of the 14 cast members in the movie were from class i mean they you know they all loved working with each other you know and like you said you don't know who you're going to connect to who you're going to meet what relationships are going to be built yeah Just just, just act as much as you can in every way you can. Watch old movies. Watch no, not just new movies. I go back and watch classics all the time, as well as new movies. You know how many actors watch? I watched Casablanca recently. Uh -huh. Oh, it was beautiful. It was stunning to watch the filmmaking of it. You know, I'll go back and watch silent movies. I'll watch Charlie Chaplin, Harold Lloyd. I'll watch the originators of comedy. You know, I just, you know, again, you know, how much do you love it? You know, how much do you involve yourself in it? You, you, you can pick up a scene every day and take 15 minutes and explore it. That's wonderful advice, actually, how to keep moving. People are coming in and out, um, joining us and leaving us. Any, well, first, First of all, how do people get in touch with you? I mean, I love the advice that you're giving everyone. How, how do they follow you on Instagram? Um, oh, Instagram is uh, at Robert Colt Studio, at Robert Colt Studio. And you can get in touch with me on my website at uh, www.robertcolt.com. And you can reach out to me there. And as we start winding up are you know any words last words or something that just came up that you'd like to tell the actors well you know when they say you do a self tape you know you know really look at you there's a great opportunity watch your work but watch your watch your work for truthfulness see 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 when you're really truthful when you're not if you want to also get a sense of if you know where where you are sometimes you can get a scene or a monologue whatever from a movie you love of an actress or an actor you absolutely love do that yourself tape it and then watch the both of them it gives you a sense you know where am i actually you know am, am i 
you know, really like locked in and, and emotionally charged like this actor is, you know, sometimes that gives you an honest yeah. assessment. Yeah. You know, because you, you know, a self assessment, it can help. You know, it's a process. Everything's in acting is a process. I just this weekend went to an opening of a play um, at North Coast Rep. And because it was opening night, there's a after um, there's an after party and I get to speak to all, all the actors in the play and gush and even the writer of the play and the director. And it was really interesting because the writer of the play and even the actors said this, we were standing around in a group and they said in tech, four days ago, nothing was connecting with each mm -hmm. other. And all of a sudden, two days ago, two days before the performance, it clicked. They all clicked. They found each other. They found themselves. They found the rhythm. They found, and, and um, it's really brave and nerve wracking. And it happens every single time with a play in tech. And then, uh, boom, boom, you're on, you know, it's opening night and you have to trust that it's all going to click. And it does only click like two days before sometimes. Mm. So it's this discovering um, that you're just talking about. Um, it is a process. It really is a process. Well, yeah. Well, you, okay, you said three things to me that are key. You, you said connect, trust, and process. So I say it this way, Terry, the communication comes out of the connection. You have, first it's this connection, then the communication. A lot of times actors reverse it. They start communicating without connecting to the other actor. You first have to connect. Then you also have to trust. You have to trust. Robert De Niro said this. All you can do is be in the moment. When you try to make something happen, it never works. It just never works. And he said, and sometimes I still make that mistake. Robert Duval says, start from zero. Basically, that's what I do. I always say a true nothing, a true nothing is way more powerful than a false something. I love that. Well, if you're an actor that has, hey, I'm, nothing's happening, but I stay with it you're basically a dangerous actor. You're basically saying, I'm not here to perform and, and do something for you. I'm here to be truthful and I'm gonna give you my truth. And then you said something key. And can you trust the process of that? I love how you just said dangerous actor. You mean that in a good way, right? To me, it's the most, it's the best compliment an actor will ever get from my opinion is you are a dangerous actor. I never know what you're gonna do. You don't seem to know what you're gonna do next. It's like, you remember uh, the late James Gondolfini in The Sopranos? Yes. I know for a fact from when I would talk to Harold in our sessions, we'd work and then we'd talk for a while. He said to me, James never knew, literally never knew what he was gonna do next in that show. He was so alive and so spontaneous and worked the way that I work wow. actually. He never knew. Wow. Never so the actors who work with you, they have to trust you too. And I imagine that takes some time, right? Depends on the actor. <laughs> Depends on the actor. Some actors are able to, you know, start trusting, you know, pretty quickly. Some take a little more time, you know, and I understand it because some actors, you know, they have to say, wait a second, what's going on here really? I have to get used to something, yeah. you know, feels a little different. So, but ultimately, ultimately in trusting me, they ultimately trust themselves. The most important is that they yeah. trust themselves. I'm so glad for this opportunity to bring you to my tribe who's watching today because you are a gift. And, you know, hopefully if, well, I know from the comments that you're bringing them really great nuggets and um, now they have an introduction to you if they do want to work with you and 
this has really been great. I really thank you for taking time out during the day. I know you have a really tight schedule with your classes. Well, I, pre I appreciate uh, you having me here, Terry. It's a lot of fun for me. And, uh, you know, I always love connecting with you too. So this is like a win-win for me. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Fantastic. And everyone, if you have any questions that were unanswered, oh, where can they email you someplace if they have questions yeah. that are unanswered? It's just, yeah. It, it, again, if you go on my website, there's a contact. That's the best place because you could uh, leave a message, ask me a question, and email me right directly from there, and I get it right away. There you go, guys. Thank you so much, Robert. Well, thank you, Terry. See you soon. Okay.